Hello and welcome to episode 178 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is March 20th, 2023. Today I'm wearing two very special things and uh, two things that I've knit out of books. So I'll be showing you quite a few books today. Um, the shawl that I'm wearing is, um, I've called it the Optic Waves shawl and the pattern for it um, is out of this book, Knitting Fresh Brioche by Nancy Marchand. And this is a very beautiful book. Um, at the back of the book, there are um, patterns for these shawls that you can see here. So you can um, knit the shawls exactly the way she has written them. Um, they are different. This is a cowl and um, this is a triangular shawl. This is on my wish list to do. Um, so you can do th that or the first half of the book, it's just a pattern, um, it's just a collection of patterns. So um, you can just pick one of these patterns and make whatever you want. And I pick this pattern, which is called Optic Waves, uh, hence the name of the shawl. And I just um, took the stitch pattern and then calculated how wide I wanted to the shawl, I actually knit a gauge swatch and I not only knit the gauge swatch, I actually washed it. I didn't block it. You're not supposed to block brioche, otherwise it goes really flat, but I just put it down to dry um, and the size didn't really change. So it wasn't important for that, but the look of the fabric really changed. It looked so much neater and nicer after it's been washed. So I kept reminding myself while I was knitting the shawl, I would sometimes just pick up the swatch and put it next to my knitting and uh, just to remind myself that even though it looked really, um, it didn't really look messy. It just looked not quite as nice. And then I looked at my swatch and I knew once it had been washed, um, it would look the same. So um, yeah, I had used, um, the light color is a, I think it's the Drops Lace. I think that's the name. It's, I think it's 70% alpaca and 30% silk. So it's a really nice gown. And the dark color is by Hansa Farm. It's a pure baby alpaca lace yarn in the color Deep Ocean. It's uh, one of my favorite colors by Hansa Farm. And um, all the patterns in the book are two color brioche with pattern. So you can just do straight brioche with two colors, but you can add a pattern and <coughs> you can get these lines and, and different looks just by doing increases and decreases. Um, the book is really well written and everything is really well um, explained. It takes a while to understand how she writes like the charts, but once you get it, it gets really easy. Now, the only thing that can improve on that book is going to be the Socometician's book that's hopefully coming out at the end of the month. And with his technique, you can knit a two color brioche pattern that's the same on both sides. So with this kind of pattern, you'll have a front and a back. And even though I think the back still looks nice, it looks different. So the lines, um, like the dark blue lines, they sort of just end nowhere and you have like two lines that go up and down. But on the other side, it's actually three lines that go up and down and the lines always meet. So like the, the light lines always meet up, which sort of makes it a bit more orderly, if you will. <laughs> but with the Socometician's book, um, both sides can be knit the same. And so I can use all the patterns that are in this book. And if I knit them with his technique, they'll be, the same on both sides. And for me, that means they'll be equally beautiful. So I'm really looking forward to that. But back to my shawl. So I just knit a swatch. I decided how wide I wanted my shawl to be. That's the number of stitches I cast on. I did the cast on that's in the book. And I also did the cast off that's in the book. To be honest, I can't really tell. I think this is the cast on, which is sort of not very visible and the stitches just seem to appear. And then the cast off sort of mirrors that and it's it's very subtle and hardly visible. Yeah, so I, and it's so soft and so light and fluffy 
uh, I love the shawl. So that's that. And then the pullover I'm wearing is out of the book Geek Knits. My sister gave that to me as a present by Joan of Dark. <laughs> and it has um, a lot of different patterns. And I think all the um, pieces are modeled by, by famous people. <laughs> I don't know them all, but <laughs> I think they're all supposed to be famous. I knit the Verse sweater, which is uh, was inspired by the series Firefly. Um, this is what it looks like in the book. So obviously I used a different color, but I also um, changed other things like the sleeves that's supposed to be really wide. Um, and the pullover is a, supposed to have a sort of used look. It's supposed to be oversized and baggy. And I just um, didn't make it quite as big, so mine is um, its not that wide, it's fairly short. The sleeves are a bit too short, not by design. I think that was just my impatience <laughs> that I wanted to be done. Uh, I used um, four different yarns. This is Silk Hair, Silk Hair by Zitlana Kossa. I don't know, but this, um, so I'm, I held the yarn doubled for the whole pullover. So in this section, I held the same yarn double. Then this is one strand of this yarn and one strand of a sparkly silk hair something. <laughs> and down here, the second, I also held one strand of this yarn and the other yarn is a Rowan uh, mohair silk sparkly yarn um, that I, originally bought to um, knit a shawl. Uh, so I, I usually like to pair that shawl and this pullover, but I've already worn that on the podcast. So I wanted to show a different uh, combination today. So that's why I'm um, wearing this pullover with this shawl today. And I think with this color, the dark side actually looks a little better. So I'm going to wear it like this. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm wearing today. Then on to finished objects. I have two proper finished objects and one partial finished object, which is also a new cast on. <laughs> and then I have two more new cast on. So it sort of balances out today. Um, so my first finished object are actually the Pay It Forward mitts by Jorge Lucatelli that I knit um, as part of the pattern battle um, where one skein of Opal subscription yarn is chosen and then everybody who participates uses the same color yarn but um, knits, knits or crochets a different pattern. So I chose these mitts. They turned out fairly small um, probably because I use a 2.0 millimeter needle so that's why I'm giving them to a friend who has very small hands. <laughs> <laughs> and she said she preferred to have like fingerless mitts. Um, so that's why I put another bit of ribbing um, at the top of the hand and left it open. The pattern itself is, um, is a free pattern by Hoki Lucatelli called Pay It Forward. Um, if you use a single color yarn, it's probably more obvious. So you can kind of see the pattern in these lighter bits of the, um, of the mitten. And then the hand is without the pattern. If you knit it as per as it's written, this part will be double the length. So it's, this is supposed to be a lot longer, but it seemed to be too long for me. So that's why I changed it to be this size. Yeah, so I'm really happy I've, um, I finished them. Um, colors are really different. So if I hold it like this, you can see where the colors line up. Um, yeah, I'm really happy to have finished them because the next subscription parcel is coming next week. So I actually managed to finish them before the next parcel arrives. I'm really happy about that. So that's that. Then I finished my hat. So last week I started another black hat. Um, this is knit out of alpaca mia, a pure alpaca yarn by Hansa Farm that they used to sell. They don't sell it anymore. And one strand of brushed alpaca by Hansa Farm, both in black. So it's a simple black hat. I'm on the whole very happy with it. I think I should have 
done the decreases a little bit different at the end so I have this little bit of a something here but I think if I wear the hat it's not it doesn't really show so I think hope you can see it now <laughs> I think it looks okay if I was really worried about that I could put a pom-pom on or a or something else just to hide it but I don't really mind that much and um, it's nice and big it's um, the, the brim is long enough to really fold over um, so I have the fabric twice over my ears it's not too tight it's actually too wide for my sister so she won't ask for for this hat <laughs> and I will most probably keep it for myself yeah it was a rather quick knit I think I put the numbers of what I did on the Ravelry page I'll check later so um, you could sort of knit a similar hat if you wanted to and then the partial finished object plus the uh, new cast on is um, another gnome so last year Sarah Shearer pro proclaimed to be the year of gnomes and I knit a gnome every month but this year it was not a year of gnomes so for the first two months <laughs> I took a break from knitting gnomes and um, but now she has published her Grimblewoods collection of gnomes that's um, a collection of patterns that she designed last year for an American yarn dyer I think so you could only get the pattern last year you could only get the pattern if you bought the yarn and then you would get the pattern with it but that's too expensive to do from here and I do have enough yarn so I didn't buy it then but now um, she's able to sell the patterns herself and of course I got the whole collection um, and I realized I should really start uh, knitting gnomes if I want to take part in the um, in the prize winning something <laughs> that she does which only runs till the end of this month and you can enter with finished objects so I had to get some finished objects so this is Nedwood Nedwood is um, one of the four gnomes in the Grimblewoods collection then there's a, a mushroom and a house <laughs> a cottage I think it's a cottage um, so I do plan to knit all six of those at some point probably not by the end of the month um, and I've decided to use the same yarn for all six projects which is something that I haven't done before with the gnomes I've usually just picked some colors and then changed it up a lot but for these six um, designs I've decided to use the same um, yarns and this is a DK weight yarn so the the blue is a leftover sock yarn as is the beard but the white is a merino yarn by Schachenmeier and I've also picked a grey merino by Hansa Farm and, and then there's a pink colourful opal yarn that I've chosen uh, for the I think in the pattern they're red but I want to use the, the colourful pink for those bits yeah so this is um, yeah and the, the, the funny thing about Nedford of, are of course his feet so I love his feet um, and the, the square head is nice too with like with the little pompons on the sides and um, yeah so he's a very nice fella I'm really happy I finished him and maybe I can get another finished object done by um, next week which will still be this month we'll see <laughs> yeah so that's it for finished objects then on to works in progress and of, as usual I'll um, start with the socks I'll be right back I just give that a little push because um, that's my tea thermos thing and it sometimes makes noises <laughs> sorry about that anyway the socks um, I did not continue knitting on the knee-high socks I did choose a pattern I want to put in butterflies but I didn't get around to doing that but um, I'm not sure whether I've talked about it in in the English podcast but I did in the German that I have this um, like notebook and it says meine Strickmuster which means my knitting patterns and it has instead of like squares in a normal notebook it has like lots and lots of stitches so you can go ahead and you can put a pattern in and you will see what it looks like uh, when once you knit it so it's not um, let me see 
Like if you want to put a sheep, you can put it in, draw in here. And because the stitches, stitches aren't square. So if you use a paper with squares, it will look different than when you knit it. But because the, the printed stitches in the book have the same sort of shape as knitted stitches, you can get an, um, a better feel for what the pattern is going to look like once you knit it. So I've been using that to um, try out different pattern. I'm not very good with coming up with my own pattern, so usually I will copy them from a book um, and then tweak them a bit or, or change a, a little something. Um, but this really gives me the opportunity to um, see what it looks like exactly in the knitted fabric. Um, you can order them on Amazon. I've linked them below the video. Um, I think at the moment they're not available, but if they become available again, you should probably be able to get them there. Yeah, but I kept forgetting to show this, so I'm really happy I uh, remembered today. So I use that for the knee-high socks a lot. Um, yeah, then the next pair of socks that I have actually knit on are the Meander socks, which are a bonus pattern of the Sock Madness. I'll talk about the Sock Madness in a minute. And um, I chose this color of the series Country and I, I put in different needles. I'm not knitting with these needles, but I needed the needles that were in here for something else. So I just put them on hold here. So these socks have a beautiful lace pattern on top of the foot. And I did the um, increases, the, what are they called? Um, is it gusset? I think it's the gusset increases. And then I've just started knitting the heel flap. So the heel flap has these um, sort of cross stitches that go one half goes this way and the other half goes that way. And I've had my sister um, try them on and they fit her. So I'm really happy that I chose the right moment to start the gusset increases and um, they seem to fit her really well. And now all I need is time to continue knitting on them. And I'm sure you can guess why I didn't have time. <laughs> anyway, so these are the only socks that you've seen before. Then, the sock madness, um, the round one actually didn't end until Saturday, which was like the day before yesterday. And then the next, the pattern for round two uh, came out Saturday evening. But before it came out, I got a new book. This book is called Zauberhafte Lace Socken, which means um, Zauberhafte, something like very beautiful lace socks. Um, by Maria Oyanpere, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, but it's um, by the publisher Stipna, and they gave me, um, they sent me the book for free to um, have a look at and to talk about on the podcast. So that's what I'm doing, but I only ever talk about books if I'm actually knitting from them. So I had to start a sock. And one of the interesting things about this book is that it has socks for sock weight yarn for DK weight yarn and for um, is it was it weight yarn so what in German we call four ply six ply and eight ply so the three different um, yarn weights that Opal produce this book has patterns for so that was one of the reasons I really really wanted um, to have it so these are the patterns that are for the four ply these are the patterns for the six ply and then there are these socks for the eight ply yarn and you can see these are knee highs, these are knee high and this one and this one as well. So there's quite a few knee high socks in this book and um, yeah, it's a really beautiful book. The patterns are well written, the charts aren't too small. <laughs> I'm getting to the age where I can really appreciate that and it has beautiful pictures. So this is uh, one of the really beautiful patterns. And this person is standing on blocks of ice with frozen flowers in them. I think this is such an amazing photograph. And just to have the idea to do something like that, it's just amazing. Um, so um, I think there are just lots and lots of clever ideas in taking photographs in this book, just to make them a bit more interesting 
and every pair for every pair of socks you get several pictures so you can see them from the front or the side or sometimes the back so it's a really really beautiful book um, I have to show you the pair of socks with the flowers in them oh by the way this is the pair of socks I have started knitting just to give you an idea and um, and this is the picture I just have to show you it's such a funny picture beautiful socks and uh, and the book is just full of um, beautiful patterns and very beautiful pictures that's one of the pairs of knee highs um, this is if you get if you get married in winter you might want to knit and wear these uh, knee high socks um, Oh, for all the cat lovers out there. Very nice picture. Okay, but to show you the socks that I am knitting, I chose to do that pattern because I really liked it and they aren't quite as high. I didn't want to start with knee highs. <laughs> Knowing it's sock madness time, I didn't want to put too much uh, work in other socks, but I did want to start with something in the book. And um, Opal don't have a blue or that kind of blue, turquoisey blue, uh, with their six-ply yarn. So I was um, trying to be a good girl, and I looked at the leftover yarn that I have instead of starting a new ball of yarn, and I realized I had quite a bit of this neon pink color, and I, I decided to do those socks in that color. I certainly thought about the colorful yarns, but then I think the pattern would just get lost a little bit. So um, I'm really happy with my color choice for these socks. Haven't done a whole lot yet, but this is like half a pattern repeat. And so far I think it looks really nice. This is the front of the leg and the back of the leg, leg looks like this. So just very simple stripes. Um, yeah, so as soon as I've done the sock mat and the socks, I can put in some more work into these neon socks. Yeah, and now back to the sock madness. So Saturday night, I was out and busy. And when I got home, I realized the pattern had dropped and I looked at the pattern and I was at home. I couldn't um, get to the yarn in the shop. So I chose something that I had at home. And because there's quite a bit of pattern in this sock, I went for this almost solid color. I mean, it's it's, well, it's basically a solid color, but it has like this uh, mix of yellow and white. And I think that's because of the material mix. It's a cotton. Um, it has 41% wool, 34% cotton, and then 25% polyamide. So I think it's the material mix that makes the color just be a bit different. Um, so it's not all the same kind of yellow, but it has like this little bit of white in it. But I thought this should show a pattern really nicely. And the sock has beads, not a lot, but a few. And I will probably use these beads. So they are mainly red or pink, but there is some yellow and orange in there as well. And so maybe I'm going to pick the, the beads with the most yellow in them. Maybe I won't. I don't know yet. But I thought it's a nice combination. It's sort of looks a bit like spring I I think <laughs> so um, yeah I started the sock Saturday night then yesterday I was really busy again but in the evening I had some time to knit and this is what I've done so far the pattern is called Celtic rain socks by Cynthia Hüttner and I think it's a very beautiful pattern it's not really very complicated or very difficult it's just fiddly and um, you have to pay attention because the pattern is not like um, easy to memorize. <laughs> so I have to keep looking at the um, at the pattern. The gusset increases for this sock are on the sole of the foot, which is quite interesting. And they start fairly early because you only increase every third round instead of every second round, which is a bit different. Um, yeah, but so far, I'm quite happy. I'm just knitting the minimum requirement size. So no idea what it's going to be. Probably too big for me, but that's okay. Um, one of the things that I notice about this pattern is that, or let's say 
with the sock madness, you're supposed to learn new things. And with a lot of socks, I actually do learn new things, even though I've been knitting for a very long time and I've tried a lot of things. But the thing that I've learned with this pattern is a new way of crossing the stitches. So you can cross stitches using a cable needle. Um, you can just cross the stitches without a cable needle. And I had a certain way that I learned how to do that. But this pattern showed me a new way of crossing stitches without a cable needle. And that's very interesting. Quite happy to have learned that. Yeah, so this is the first bit of my first sock. Um, the first person is already finished with the whole pair. She's from, I think, Team T. And uh, just before I started recording, I checked and somebody's already finished. It's quite crazy, but that's okay. And it's, um, for me, it's not about winning. <laughs> It's just about participating, so that's fine. Really enjoying this pattern, though, and looking forward to finishing these. So that's it for the socks for today. Um, let's do some other things. The clothes. I have continued knitting on my Noro cardigan. So this is slowly but surely growing. I brought the sleeves today just for fun, just to hold them together so um, I think for a short cardigan that would already be enough but I still have four balls of yarn this is the Noro Silk Garden Solo and I figure that three balls should be enough to do the um, yoke of the cardigan so I am going to knit one more ball into the front and back to make it a little longer and then hope for the best that the other three will be enough to um, finish it up at the top. Quite exciting. <laughs> we'll see about that. Then the pullover that I'm knitting, I um, I show you the finished yoke and the finished sleeve last week. And then I knit, I think the bit that I've knit now was the leftover yarn from knitting the sleeves. And... Um, and it was quite funny, I was knitting during our sort of knit night thing and I was looking at other things and not paying attention to my knitting. And then when I looked down, I realized that this purple color is all on the front and there's none of it on in the back. And I think I would have preferred to have the blue and green in the front. So I'm not really into ripping back. Now I think I'll accept it the way it is, but when I um, put the next ball of yarn, when I start knitting that, I will make sure <laughs> that the purple bits come um, onto the back. So I'll have some more white and blue and green on the front of my pullover. And then I can just keep knitting all the situations where I can't concentrate on the sock mat and the sock or after I finish it. I can continue knitting the front and back of that. Then we have, I still neglected the dinosaur skeleton loop, so maybe this week, we'll see. Um, the two shawls I'm knitting, um, I only knitted a few rows on my Pierre shawl by Stephen West. Um, I finished the ribbed section that I was on last week and I've started, I've just set up those triangles. So if you have a look here, you can see these are stockinette and reverse stockinette triangles and they the same uh, will be worked here. So I've just started, this is the base sort of of the uh, stockinette triangle and this is the tip of the reverse stockinette triangle. So um, yeah, rows are getting longer. It takes a while to, to do those rows. But I knit a little more on the fragmentation shawl. And I really would have liked to finish the second wedge, but I didn't. So um, the fragmentation shawl is a shawl that you start with a little like half circle. And then you just knit on a few of those stitches and you knit the first wedge. And, um, and then you do the second, third, and so on. And instead of using different colors as it's written in the pattern, I've decided to use just one um, sort of color, but it's, it's one of the Opal uh, Beauty Series colors with these color blocks. And so I started the second wedge 
so that the colors would sort of be in a different place. And I have put in quite a bit of work. And I'm almost done. It's only this little bit that's left, but there was, there just wasn't time to do that. So looking at how the stripes come out now, I'm really happy with how the yeah, colors look. And I'm still so excited to start the third wedge and see um, sort of the third way of the colors will stack up. And then with the fourth wedge, I should be back um, with the same colors as, as wedge number one. So that's um, quite interesting. Yeah, my sister has already finished her second wedge and she started the third one. I'm a bit jealous, but <laughs> that's the way thing, things go. So um, that should be really interesting when we do our um, sisters video at the end of the year again. So these are the shawls and then there's only the two um, crochet projects. And I think last week I said I only did a little bit of crochet. Last week I did even less. So at first I thought I'll leave them at home, but I thought, well, I actually crocheted two rounds. <laughs> I finished the first clue. <laughs> so I think the only difference is that this pattern, this shape has sort of come to a close. The dark color uh, has met, the two th stripes have met. So it's almost exactly the same as last week, but I did two rounds. So I thought I can show you with my beautiful alpaca lace um, crochet granny square. I only added one round. <laughs> So even less of a reason to show it to you, but I just love it so much. And I did actually do this one round and I've made up my mind what to do with the next um, couple of uh, rounds. And I've decided not to go straight to the gray and black section, but I am going to keep the light blue and the, and the sort of the two grayish blues in there. And, um, the last part, I kept repeating the black as the third round, and I would now do the same with the dark gray. So I had the middle gray here as the third round, and, uh, and now I'm doing the dark gray, and I'll mix the other grays and the black and the two gray blues. And after that, it'll probably just be grays and black. We'll see about that. And by the way, the color that's here, the, the deep ocean, that's the same color as my shawl. So it's the same color and the same yarn. It's both the alpaca lace yarn. Yeah, so that's it. That's everything I knit and crocheted last week. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next week. <laughs>